All right, we are recording. So thank you guys so much for being here and joining us for this meeting. Um, I've met some of you. My name is Deborah Schenzer, and I am the lead teacher um, help organizer of our online academy. We have John O'Neill here this evening, who is the program administrator. So he is here also. Um, good, we evening. Appreciate, yeah, good evening, and we um, appreciate you guys being here. Um, the purpose of our meeting is to address topics prior to conferences so that your conference time can focus specifically on your child. There's a lot of nuts and bolts things that we tend to talk about, and we wanted to make sure that was taken care of before um, your meeting so you can just specifically talk about how your child is doing. So we're going to talk about um, five things tonight. We're going to talk about um, who are the teachers. And we're going to talk about some uh, review our schedule changes. We're going to talk about our online academy expectations, um, how does grading work at this grade level? Because as fifth graders coming in, this is your first year at Tom McCall. So we do things differently than the um, one through K through four does them for grades. And talk about like supplies, work area, and then we'll have a time for questions and answers at the very end. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is introduce to you. So as you guys are uh, know, at the beginning of the year, I was the teacher, and um, our program um, just grew beyond our expectations, and it was very exciting to see the growth that we had. Um, and because of that, they decided to add um, teachers to you. So they took the class from me and added them to Miss Bishop. Uh, Miss Bishop is the math and science teacher. This is her third year at Tom McCall. She loves hiking and baking, and she loves teaching science. Um, that's Miss Bishop right here. Miss Long, um, she's teaching your language arts and social studies. Hey, this is her, yes. You're not presenting. I'm not. Oh my goodness gracious! Good. Let me try that again. Earlier I was muted, so I'm just like, take my pick on what I'm doing well. This is what your students can sometimes have to deal with. So um, here we go. Try that again. So this is some. Um, uh, Ms. Bishop over here on this side, and then Ms. Long is the language arts and social studies teacher. Um, this is her 17th year teaching. 15 of those years have been here at Tom McCall. She loves teaching online, and she is, I'm telling you, a diehard Blazers fan. She really is a diehard Blazer fan. Um, so that's the two new teachers that are working with your students. What came along with that was a schedule change. Um, so this, this is what I want to spend some time on for all students so you guys make sure that you guys understand this is that at eight o'clock they are logging in um, and they get this optional login time so from eight to nine, they do have optional zoom time, this is when Mrs long is online um, from 830 to nine this time right here. Um, they're doing the reading homework here from eight to 830. And their optional Zoom time is 8.30 to 9. This is where they can get help um, from Mrs. Long on their reading and um, just check in with her to get their homework done and so forth. So that is at 8.39. That was an optional time. By 9 o'clock, they do need to be logged on to literacy. Um, their literacy time with Mrs. Long goes from 9 to 10. And then they switch and they have social studies from 10 to 10.30. So this is time that they really should be online um, with Mrs. Long, the whole class time. Like their attendance is the whole time. That's their um, direct instruction for those subjects. Then at 1040, they have a little bit of a break. And at 1040, there's specific students who are being invited to do an intervention with Mrs. Fulton. And they've been, you guys will get letters on those and you will um, have an invite from Mrs. Fulton. The student will have an invite from Mrs. Fulton for reading um, intervention. Um, from 1040 to 1110. The rest of this time is their lunch and movement break. So this is when they're gonna get lunch, do some movement, they can finish their homework if they got homework at that time. Um, but again, this nine to 1030, they are to be online that whole time, just like they were in school, that is their school time. At 1130, they log on with Miss Bishop and that's when they're doing their science. They have science from 1130 to 12. She switches and does math core from 12 to one. And again, that's the whole time being on there for attendance. So they do attendance twice. They'll do attendance in the morning and they do attendance at 1130 both times to count for attendance. They are there the whole time. 
Then at one o'clock, they have an optional, again, it's optional math time um, to work on their Zoom with Miss uh, Bishop if they need extra help in math and she stays on to help them. And then they can go to Reflex or Frax or spend time doing their homework. And then the afternoons is their independent study of PE mu and music. Okay, so the purple, the green and the blue are the times that they are online with their teacher getting direct instruction. Okay, and we will, um, I will, um, let me do the questions at the very end, but I'll come back to that and we'll let you know. Okay, so that's this right here, that is their daily schedule. So the important part here is that nine o'clock, all students should be logged in. If they can be there on time, it makes doing the attendance easier. It makes getting started with the day easier. Um, we're not counting them tardy and so forth, okay? That leads us right into our expectations. Um, we are asking for online so that we know that they are participating during direct instruction time and to ensure active participation in class, video cameras need to be on, students to be visible, it means we need to be able to see their eyeballs. We are, there is a little bit of flexibility that if they are having a bad day, if they um, can't be on camera for some reason, have stuff going on at home, that they can have their videos off as long as they are continually communicating with their teacher through the chat box. Um, unfortunately, it's been reported that we have a lot of students who are, I guess, in each other, like ghosting their teachers. They're turning their videos on, they're turn, muting the teacher and then doing something else, and they're not participating in the class. And um, then, then they come back down like, what are we supposed to be doing? It's like we've been going over the whole class and talking about it. So please make sure that they are part actively participating in their class if you can have a conversation about that. Um, another big one that goes along with that is that work completion. Um, students are being assigned daily work. Um, there will be some in-class time to work, but any work that is not completed during the work time um, should be done as homework. Um, that is that time, uh, if you look at the schedule, that reading homework time is built into their day, 8 to 8.30. If they are unsure how to do the assignment, that's when they can join that 8.30 to 9 optional time. And a um, um, Long will send, can send out an invitation to them if she thinks they need to be there, but that's their time to get the homework there, done there, and this is the time they have to do their homework there. If they're wanting to do their homework in the evening, like when you're home and getting help from you, that is fine, um, but that's the important thing. What, what, what the teachers have been noticing is um, quite a few of our online students have not been doing the work completion piece. So and, Deb, just just a couple of questions. If you yeah. go to that next slide, the schedule. Yes. Um, so the question was, what time should my child be on? Eight thirty or nine? For sure, nine o'clock. Yes. Is the literacy instruction, but if they need help, they need uh, to get on at eight thirty. Eight thirty. Yes. Perfect. And then, how do uh, the parents know if their kid is attending or not? That's another question that just came in. Um, that is one that we are working on, and we are going to be, um, we're working on a process with the teachers for that. One is going to be their attendance, and we can actually, um, when we talk about how, what, how we're taking attendance, that is one way. Um, the other way is um, we're going to talk how you can get onto their Canvas course to see if they're missing any work, or you can get onto the uh, student view or parent view, and you can see if they're not doing the work or not. And we Perfect. Can and then... Also, parent conferences coming up. And parent conferences coming up. Yeah, so you thinking. have parent conferences next week, and those teachers will fill you in specifically how your kiddo is doing. And the question, I, I misread it, is how do we know whether or not they're participating? Um, so anyway. Um, and then, so that's one that you'll find out at conferences because the teachers will let you know if your child's participating or not, unless you're sitting right there with your kiddo watching them on their screen. Um, this could be whether the teacher's like, I haven't heard from your kid or they're not turning in the work or I haven't seen them on screen. And they're going to talk to you about that when they do, um, when they have conferences with you next week. Um, to know if your child needs to attend at the 8.30 year time, um, Again, that would be your child being invited by uh, Ms. Long or by um, Ms. Bishop, or your child will know that they need help because they can't finish the assignment. Um, 
the teachers, um, when, most like when I was doing it, I had copy the uh, parents when I send an email. So if I invite a child to attend um, the optional Zoom to get caught up on their work, I always tag the parents so the parent knows that the child needs to attend as well. Um, so you can check your emails for that. Um, and then some of it is trusting your kiddo. And then again, you can look on Parent View or Canvas to see if they're missing any work. There's a way for you to check that. And we're gonna go over that here at the end. Okay. Um, so again, that the important time is that purple time and the green and blue time. Um, the other part is demonstrates progress. Again, that goes to that work completion piece. Are they showing progress and are they um, gaining? And that will come from teachers doing progress reports for you and then demonstrating that they are, the students are demonstrating that they're um, growing and showing progress. And that will come up on progress reports and report cards. Attendance. Um, this is a big one right now. And where it's going to be talked a little bit about at independent and individual conferences, but the big one right now is regular attendance is required. Um, if students are logging in late, teachers will be marking them as tardy. Um, attendance is taken twice a day, so it is taken in that morning time at nine o'clock, and then taken again when they join for science. I think it was at um, eleven thirty. So they take attendance here, and they take attendance here. We have noticed on some um on some level that um, students will log in to one class and they won't log into the second class so they're being marked here for their literacy class but they're not being marked here for their science class because they're not logging in um yes the recording will be um, posted later so um it will be shared yeah thank you mr now um so they do take attendance at nine o'clock and they take attendance at 1130. Um, so that is also there. Oops, went too far. Um, so just wanna make sure that you guys are aware that attendance is taken twice and they, um, they are, they we're marking if they're showing up tardy. If they show up and their screen is black, they're muted and they're not responding, um, we're reaching out to parents and letting them know that kiddos aren't, um, responding or we're calling and saying that that's not really in attendance, they're just ghosting us. And we're trying to work with those families individually and those students individually. But um, that, is a, um, that is one of the things that we are working on. Um, last year, there was a little more grace given for attendance. And this year it's, we're back to our regular school year. So it's regular attendance. It's um, after four unexcused, after four unexcused absences, there is the letter or the, the call that will go out and say that your kiddos had four unexcused absences. Um, and then that's like trying to avoid truancy issues um, because that does count. Um, we wanna make sure everybody's understanding that piece of it. Um, so that we're um, getting that, okay? And, I, and I'm doing my best to try to do the chat. I'm, I'm, I will more than likely, just so you guys know, so I can keep going, I will do, I'll go back and answer all the questions unless Mr. O'Neill is able to answer them as we go. I'll go back and answer them during the question and answer time. So um, anyway, so the attendance is, we're really working on the attendance piece and trying to make sure that that's taken care of and people know that when they have to be there. Um, here's how we grade at Tom Call. And we are proficiency-based grading. So this is how we do our grading. 30% of their grade is made up of their practice homework, what we call formative assessments, those like quizzes and um, daily assignments, their participation, work ethic, group work, all of that is practice work and that's 30% of their grade. So that's kind of goes in this bucket. We have like different buckets that we do. And let's say we come up to a test or a proficiency where they're being graded on a skill, then they have three attempts to actually master show us that they've mastered that skill. So let's say, for example, on the attempt one, they got 73%. On attempt two, they got 87, but they're like, oh, I'm so close. I really wanna go for a higher grade, but attempt three, they got 82%. We take their best score and move it over here to their essential standard which is 80%, 87%, and that becomes 70% of their grade. 
So then our grade book does a combined total of the whatever they get for the 30% and whatever they get for the 70% but we take their best score on the proficiency. So we do give the A, B, C, D, F grades at Tom McCall, we, that's where we start them. And so we just wanna make sure you understand. So sometimes this has happened, that sometimes a student will have all of their work in, have full credit for all of this and do their attempt one. And let's say they get a 60% or even the 73% on their attempt one. If the teacher enters their first attempt into the grade book, you're going to see that their grade is going to be like, for the most part, whatever this proficiency um, score is. Um, I will give you the example when my kids, they first started doing this, my daughter was in high school and she would have an A one day and then she'd take a proficiency and fail the proficiency and all of a sudden she's getting an F. And I was just like, oh my goodness, how come you're getting an F in your class? Like, I don't understand. And she was like getting like consequences for having an F in class. And she was like, mom, is proficiency grading? All I have to do is retake the test and I'll be fine. So just know that they do get three attempts to fix that proficiency. Um, and so, but they have to have the time to finish that. So make sure that you're ask them. So if, the, if you see that they're like not getting a good grade, say, did you fix this attempt? Um, by multiple attempts, that means if they take a proficiency, a test, so let's say they take a math test, that's the easiest one, because that's what I did. And they took a math test. And let's say the first time they took the test, they got a 60%, which is a D. And they're like, yeah, I don't want a D. Then the teacher and the child works together. And then they do, um, they get trying to think the right word, they get work, extra, extra work, but they, they work with the teacher to relearn that skill or to practice that skill some more. And then the teacher says, okay, on this day, you can have a second attempt at taking the test. And then they take that second attempt and that's their, that's their second attempt. And then we take out of, they get three opportunities to take that test to show us mastery. And then we take the best of those attempts and give them their score. If they get a 90 or above percent their first attempt, they don't have to do the other attempts. They they ate, they got an A, they're good. But if they didn't do well and they want an opportunity to improve, they have up to three opportunities to take that test. That's what multiple attempts is, okay? So this is how your, we do grading. Um, again, that conversation, if they have a, if you see something that says an essential standard, that's the word on their parent view, and it says essential standard, and that's a low score, and your, your child is not getting um, a passing score, you can ask them, how many attempts have you done on that test? Have you done the work with your teacher to be able to retake that test? And those are questions that you can ask your kiddo, okay? Or you can message a teacher and say, how is, you know, I, I see that my kid did not do well in this on this a proficiency or essential standard, can we, can they, do they have the opportunity to do that? And all, yeah, all, all subjects do this. this, is how we do all of our language arts and all of our math are proficiency-based grading, okay? Um, supplies and place to work. At this point, you should have received all these supplies, um, a Chromebook and the charger. And hoping everybody has that. Um, the binder or their packet of Avid notes. Um, we've sent that home with everyone. Um, two spiral notebooks, pencils, colored pencils or crayons, eraser, pencil sharpener, and glue. Um, these were some of the basic supplies that we handed out. Um, if you do not have, especially the, well, I'm hoping that your kiddo has the Chromebook and charger at this point, but if they do not have the Avid notes still, um, you can let me know and I will um, arrange for you to come be able to come and pick those up. They are the notes for the year. I like was trying to be efficient and send them home for the year. So um, that goes down to this bottom one, which is please try to make a quiet environment for your child to work and a safe place to keep all their supplies. Like, Here's your school supplies and they sit with your Chromebook and that's just where they are every day. Um, if that's a possibility to do that, that would be great. But that quiet work environment is another one. Um, I've come into the classroom a couple of times and work with some kiddos and they will unmute for me. And um, I'm like, are you listening to music while I'm teaching? They're like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, are you able to listen to me when you're doing your music? And they're like, 
no, <laughs> like, well, let's try to work on not having that on. And so that's one of those um, things is like, if they're possible, have a quiet workplace and um, that's the kind of their space to work and a safe place to keep their supplies would be really helpful. If your child um, is struggling with being able to stay focused and there's distractions around, um, I can get them noise canceling headphones. So if that's something you think that would help your kiddo out, please let me know. And I would be happy to um, arrange for you to be able to come get those. Um, Cause I do have some here at the school um, that you can get. Okay. Um, what does set us apart? One of the things that we're trying to do to set us apart from some other options out there is we do have that flexible independent work time. So we have tried to build in that time, the day and the schedule where they don't have to be sitting in front of the computer with a teacher, that they have that flexible work time. But that also means they have to use that independent work time as well. Um, but that is something that we want to do to set us apart so they're not on screen all day long. Um, we do provide daily live teaching and access to one-on-one -on -one help with a teacher. So those in the schedule, those colors I showed you, this is where they're online with Mrs. Long, and here's where they're online with Ms. Bishop. And then those optional times, that's when they have independent time or one, um, like one-on-one -on -one or um, very few students in the class, or they put them in breakout rooms and they go around, so they have one-on-one -on -one help with the teachers, and um, that's available. Um, they do have the ability to attend PE or music um, if requested. I haven't had anyone request that yet, but if that's something that you want, please reach out to me and I will work on getting that taken care of. And we're trying to provide the opportunity um, to challenge and to make growth. Like we want this to be a highly successful opportunity for your, um, your kids to learn in a safe environment and to be able to be challenged and to make some growth as well. So that's one of the things that's part of our goals. So pretty excited about that. So at this time, now I'm going to go back to the chat box and try to answer some questions. And I think I've hit most of them. So what happened with the PE log? So they should still have access. And I think the person who asked this had to leave, but they still should have access to the PE log. Um, if it's not working, um, the teachers haven't let me know that yet. So they should be able to log into that. And I'm not sure because uh, the the reading log may have to come down because that was something that I was going to do. And I'm not sure what Ms. Long's doing. She may be handling that differently. So I will talk with her about that and have her address that during conferences. Um, as far as communication with teachers, um, part of it, oh, it's not on this slide. Um, so if I go back up here to grades, one of the other things that you can do, so there is parent view, you should have and you might want to check your spam, you should have received an email from Tom McCall that gave you your code to get into parent view. Um, if you did not, you can contact the office, but they said check your emails and check your spam folder for something from the office that said sign up for parent view. And it gives you a code to go in and sign up. And when you do that, teachers keep their grades updated every two weeks you can go in and look at your child's grades. You can see what they've done, what their scores are, and you can see if they're missing any work. So you can just get onto Parent View. That's one of the great things about Synergy and the program that we use is you can get on that. So if go back and look for your emails um, that say Parent View and get signed up for that. The other thing you can do is you can sign up um, to be an observer on your child's Canvas course where you can go into their canvas and you can actually look at their work. Um, we've had some students that have been turning in work, but they turn it all in blank. Um, and so they need to be like, they just look at it and they go, whoop, whoop, dude, and they turn it in and like, I have no missing work. Look at that, mom, I have no missing work. But they turned in like, they put it like a thing that says IDK or nothing or hello, and <laughs> they don't even do the work. So you can go in and actually look at their work. The other thing, and this is what I did with my kiddos, if I didn't wanna bother turning it, you know, getting a parent view, or I didn't wanna bother having a Canvas support, I would say to them down and say, open up your student view. You open up your student view. You show me what your grades are. You show me what you're missing. You, cause they can see it too. Students have access to see, all of that information, which is fantastic because there's no surprises at the end. Um, and so, and then the other thing about communication is if you are unsure, email your teacher. Um, 
The teachers that are on a Ms. Bishop and Ms. Long will respond really quickly to emails. Just email them um, and they'd be happy to talk to you. And you can set that up a little program with them when you have your conferences. Um, they do have to fill out the PE log for it to count. Um, that is true. They have to fill out that PE log because that's how we know what they're doing in how many minutes. There is no music log because the music log is the music is not required by the state, but PE is. They should be logging 150 minutes of PE um, every week. Okay. Um, there we go. So the, where the PE log is on your student's Canvas page, or that's where it was. Um, and so there should be on their Canvas page, their home page with their teacher, there should be a button that says PE log. When they click it, it takes them to a form and they fill out the form. And then um, they just, it's like they answer, they don't even have to, they choose their name. And once they choose their name, they say, what activity did they do? How many minutes submit? So it should be on there. Um, you're welcome. Yep, Canvas Observer, you can totally go in and do that during your conference. You can, um, if you're not sure how to do become a Canvas Observer, um, I have directions, send me an email and I will send you the directions on how to sign up to be an observer on your child's Canvas page. Okay, we are at the Q&A part. Um, so keep the questions coming. Um, what else do you need, would you like to know about attendance or schedule or expectations or anything about how great, how we do grading at Tom McCall? Because I do know it's different than the elementary schools. Any other questions? Sure you can unmute if you want to, or you can type it in the chat box. Either way is fine. Oh, I was just going to say, is there a difference between the observer view on the Canvas course and the parent view in the emails, or is that the same yes, thing? Yes, there is a difference. So in Canvas, you can actually see the quality of their work. So you can see their actual work. Um, in the Canvas course. On Parent View, you're just going to see their scores and if they're missing work. You can see missing work on both, but you'll be able to see the actual work in Canvas and where Parent View is just like where the scores and the grades are. Yeah, the parent, the, the, um, the observer is exactly what I needed because, you know, exactly like you said, like my son likes to just do the bare minimum. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, before you turn anything in, I want to see what you, you did, but then he'll be like, oh, I already turned it in and I don't know how to do it and show you. So then it's like, it's gone. And then I'm like helpless and I can't check up and see. Oh, but the did. students can go back and look at their work. Like you can tell them to go back to the assignment and click on it and it'll show you what they did. And it'll show you their score on it. Okay. I don't know how to do that yet. And he, yep. I, he has shown me how to do that. First. Yeah, I would have that. You could have that conversation with the teacher and she would probably be able to show you that during conferences. Like, oh, let's share our screen and have have Oz there and say, oh, share your screen. Let's show your mom how you can check your grades. It's easier with math because there's only one answer. But with English, it's always more complicated. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go back through a couple other things just to kind of wrap up and like, you know, do a quick overview to make sure everybody understands. So, Miss, um, again, Miss Bishop is the math and science. So, if you have questions about math and science, you can email Miss Bishop. If you have questions about language arts and social studies, please um, send a message to Miss Long. She's happy to help you. Um, their schedule, again, it's that optional is the only way you're going to know is if your kid gets an invite and they go to their optional meeting. But the important times that they're required to be online is that 9 to 1030 should be there the whole time. So they get all of the information that they have a 1030 to 1130 break. There are a handful of students that have an intervention time at 1040. The next time they need to be um, going online and they're doing attendance is 1130 and they have 11.30 to one, and then they have that optional um, health time at the end or for help with uh, math here. 
So their day did get, you know, like it went a little later than what they originally were doing, but it gives them a bigger break in the middle to be able to walk away from their computer for a little bit, which is nice. Um, and again, the, the camera's on as much as they can and as much as they're willing. I know it's really uncomfortable to have yourself on camera. I find I have to do it every day. And so I understand their pain. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things just to make sure that is that active involvement and that being able to make that connection with the child, um, being able to see like, um, cause I tell them like communication is really important and facial expressions and body language are a huge part of communication. And so if I can't see you, I don't know if you actually understand or if you don't understand making sure yeah. checking in on their work completion. Um, and that means like, again, being an observer on Canvas so you can see the quality of the work that they're turning in. Um, that probably is gonna be a huge help for a lot of people. And then that demonstrate progress, attendance, and that regular attendance is required. Um, vlogging in late, teachers will have to mark them tardy. And then attendance is taken twice a day. Again, is that for unexcused that does back to the normal school year does put the truancy track in there, um, which we really want to avoid. The other thing that we want to make sure that we understand here is that we are going to be coming up to the semester. But if we're having a real struggle, your child's really having a struggle, um, we can have a conversation about is the online the best option? And so we can have those conversations. Um, again, that proficiency based grading knowing that 30% is that, they can have all of their practice work and all of this done, that's 30% of their grade, but it's the essential is passing the test or the proficiency, that's the biggest chunk of their grade. So like, even if a kiddo is just kind of doing partial work here, if they can't pass this test because they didn't do any of the practicing, that's where you're also going to know that they're really struggling because they can't pass the test because they didn't really do the, the, the practice work. Um, and you can see that. Um, um, can I ask something about the math yeah. optional portion? Yeah. Um, so every day, what I've been doing is just clicking on the math homework and seeing that if making sure it says nothing to do. And then if it says nothing to do, I've just been letting him do fracs or whatever mm -hmm. as supplements. Is that a proper procedure? As you can do that if you want to see. Option? If you want to see his scores, I think there's a way that he can click on it and show you his score for that assignment. So if he had homework that day, I can't remember, is that like other things to do, but there's like past assignments. You can actually have him show you the past assignments and you can see, well, yeah, you finished it, but you got a zero. So did you actually do it or did you not do it? Did you not understand it? He has showed me the scores and he's yeah. making sure that not a hundred percent or whatever I to make sure you got a good grade on it or it. so I have been doing that yeah you're I good then yeah. yeah yeah so if there's nothing under things to do then you can have him do his fractures reflex yep okay you, you got it Thanks. um and then any other so any other questions about schedule about time to be there the expectations anything I guess I still <laughs> didn't quite understand why, whether we know, how do we know whether to start at 830 or not? Like the 830 it, time is optional. And so it would be if you got an email from the teacher that said, please join me at 830. Or if your child thought that I don't know how to do this right reading assignment and I think I need to go get help. Okay, so it, I mean, because I was going to say, my you know, my child is not going to want to attend school early if 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 at all possible. He would. You would then more than likely you would get an you will get an email from the teacher inviting them to show up for that optional time. And that will be sent to me. It should not be sent to both you and the child. So the okay, both. Perfect. So to the child for the invitation and you for the accountability, so they know. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep my child accountable. I need yeah. to talk to an adult. That's all. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Any other questions? So lastly, what I want to say is I want to thank you guys so much for sticking with this. I know that there has been a lot of changes and we had to switch. Um, part of that's because we just grew so big. And at one point, I when I was doing both fifth and sixth grade, I had 77 students. And that was a lot. And so we 
we just like our numbers like tripled from the time we started. And one, I just love the fact that we have this opportunity and this option for students to be able to learn in a safe environment and that you guys are sticking with us. Um, we just need to work together as a team to make sure that your child's getting the education that they deserve. And that's what we're that's what our goal is to make sure that we're being successful and that we are um, doing everything we can working together as a team to make sure that your kiddo gets the education that they need. So um, yeah, we would just really appreciate you guys being here with us. If there's anything that we can do, please just reach out to the teachers or myself in the chat box. I am putting again my, um, I have to remember how to spell my name. Um, my email address. So if you need anything, you can um, reach out to me. So that is my email address that you can um, reach out. If you have program questions or anything like that, you can reach out to me. But I appreciate you taking your um, busy evening to be here with us. And if you don't have any more questions, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a great rest of your evening. Appreciate you guys thank being you very here. Much, You're welcome.